is Roger, thanks for dropping by. This is the um, prequel to Orchids to Go. Um, so I'm just going to go through, I'll make some decisions on yes this is going, um, some will be left to debate and obviously re-emphasise re the fact that um, a couple are already earmarked, some are off to the National Dendrobium Collection so they're not available for other people and um, some will go on mixed Mazda values for sale um, with suitable descriptions and pictures of the real thing with any luck. So um, I brought the laptop in, um, I'll have to put the camera down for a minute because you won't be able to read that, it's too small, I'll make it big. You might have to put the camera down several times actually as we're going along. And the idea is that uh, I've made the names as big as possible and um, we'll colour code them. Um, some are gifts and I'll apologise to the people who gave them to me but they don't do anything for me so they're going to go. And the first one is actually top of the list. That Ancelia Africana doesn't do anything for me I must admit. So uh, first one on the list. I think what we'll do is we'll We'll just put that box on the end as um, bright green to go. Yeah, does that do? Now I've got two brassier, brassier varicosas there. Um, one's coming into bloom, one isn't. The one that isn't can go. So actually we'll just do that. We'll just copy and paste it. It'll be easier, won't it? Keep mucking about trying to... That's that. The brassier Santa Barbara's okay. The Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury is to go but it's already promised, so we need a different colour now, so we'll have yellow perhaps. Uh, yeah, that's a bright yellow, that'll do. Right, so bright yellow is for those that are earmarked as for somebody else. Now, whoever I promised that Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury to doesn't live that far away. And the idea was that um, next time I go to Burnham's, um, I would deliver it as part of that journey. So I presume they live either in Dorset or Devon, somewhere. I can't remember who it is. I did say you will have to remind me when it comes round to the time. But people from two different households are now, as from yesterday, allowed to meet up outside with suitable distancing rules and masks, yeah? So I could now deliver this and who knows, maybe that person wants to throw a couple of others in, make the trip worthwhile. But I would gladly do the trip, just to sort of charge the fuel cost, I suppose, on the grounds that it gets me out of this flipping house. <laughs> so it could be done. Right, so that one's off. Um, I did say I'd film these as we go. That's the Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury, that monster there. Yeah, I just want the space that that takes up. There's about six new growths on that, so potentially that's going to have a mass blooming. Now the brassia is, up, is that plant there, basically. So it's quite a large plant. It's got new growths on it, but so far no spikes. But it may well have some spikes. Um, what else did I say? I've forgotten already. Let's scroll back up again. Ooh. Ah, the ancelia. No, I will have to put the camera down to get that one down. No, I won't. I can hold it in my hand. It's basically on a large mount. It's a very high light orchid. I don't know how near to blooming it is, but I don't want it. So, as I say, it's, it's got some roots. It hasn't grown hardly at all since I've got it. But nonetheless, um, it's not dead. It's got green leaves and um, it will probably come into growth soon. But that is a highlight orchid. If you grow and bloom vandas successfully, then you probably do okay with that. I say probably, because I don't really know much about it. Right, so that's that. Right, where do we get to? Scrolling down. Wrong way. So that was the Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury. Now coming into the Catlias, um, that one's going to go. There aren't too many of these that are going to go. Uh, that one.
one can go. That's um, Cattleya Gen Genmanii var variety Cerulea. That's about all there actually, the rest can stay. Sologenes, the big Cristata is going to go. Again, only flowers once a year. Doesn't seem to flower that well for me. And I'm going to get rid of the Moriana, um, although that is a fabulous blooming plant. It doesn't bloom that well for me. And in addition to that, um, it's coming up for a repot, so somebody else can do that. <laughs> it's a big plant. So both of those Sologenes are going to go. I'll keep the little Natida, even though that's the worst of the three. It's an awful plant, but I want to try and get it going. It's also a project orchid. Now, my Anosmum's going to go, one of my winter resters, because I've got a Kiki that I'm happy to grow on, because it doesn't take up the space yet. <laughs> my Ophelum I'm keeping, Delicatum. That one's going, that's a, um, what you call it, nobly type, it says there at the top of the screen, nobly types. <laughs> that hasn't bloomed for some considerable time, but last year it suddenly started to grow and put, put on a good new growth. So it's coming back, if you know what I mean. That one's going to go. I'll keep the uh, other two. The other three actually. Comet King came from Rachel. Um, I struggled with that for a long time and now it's growing so I feel like I've achieved something so I want to keep that one. Um, the black hair types I'm going to keep them all. Can, um, Carinifarum I haven't had long. Formidabula, if I can get the flipping thing to grow and bloom, got hit by scale and really objected to the systemics but it's sort of coming back. The Formosum I haven't had long so I'll be keeping that. And the infundibulum I hadn't, have, hadn't had, haven't had long, and Senili obviously is staying. Now, out of the um, Latoria types, I'm going to keep all of those. None of those are going anywhere. Thai Angel, I've got two of. So again, one of those can go. Uh, Chrysium is. Oh, we need another colour now. This is. Um, it's only going to be for dendrobiums, isn't it? Because um, some of these dendrobiums, like this anosmum here, that's actually going to the um, collection. So that's not actually for sale. So let's have orange then. Orange means they're going to somebody else. In other words, they're earmarked for the um, collection. It only applies to dendrobiums. Um, and it needs to be in that collection. I'm more interested in species. Um, that one I'll keep... Both of those can be for sale. <coughs> right, where did we get to? Those are care, that one's for sale. Or oh, virtually give away. That one's going in the collection. Uh, what colour did we use? Bright orange, wasn't it? That colour, was it? Something like that. Actually, it wasn't that one. It was the one next to it. It was that one. Yeah, that looks better. Right, so that's the Chrysium. That's going to go in the collection and see if um, Marius can get the flipping thing to bloom, because I can't. Um, Farmer I cross with Griffithianum. That's going. I've had that so many years now. It had a really bad um, fungus infection that damaged the leaves. Well, recently it's been growing new growths clean. And they are clean and they're staying clean. So I've obviously cured that attack. But the older leaves are always going to look a bit manky. Nonetheless, when it blooms, it's absolutely stunning. Um, and um, so that will be for sale. What's going on here? Go away. So that's that one. And that one is there in the corner. So you can see how the leaves went with the attack. But that's a new growth, yeah? So it's now growing clean. 
and when it blooms it's absolutely stunning. Um, so that's that one. Glomeratum staying. Arvianum, Hercuglossum, Hibiki, Hookerianum, that's going in the collection. So that was that strange colour. That one, Kaniko I'll be keeping, Tortilli I'll keep. Um, Victoria Regina. I'm gonna I, actually I'm gonna get rid of the little one. Let somebody else grow that on, but that will be for sale. So right, so that's the dendrobiums done. Now in here, we might need another colour, which is those to be thrown away, because <laughs> they're just not doing any good, and I'm fed up with looking at looking at them. Now Bella is sort of okay, the Dracula. The Aletta page is not, but. Well, it's not in the way. It's on a shelf that um, that I don't use for anything else. So it's not like it's in my way. And they don't. This set don't come round for watering that often because they hold their water because of the media they're in. Copper wing is the tiny little Mazda Valia that we mounted a while ago. So we better hang on to that. We've only just sorted it out, haven't we? Um, those two hybrids I'm keeping. The Ignea. I don't know what colour to use here, but that's getting thrown away. Uh, it's a blue, because <laughs> that's what it does for me. It makes me blue. Um, the Restrepias can all stay because they're all growing well and they do well for me. Now, when we get into the Miltonias, I've got two Castanias, so one of those will go. Um, those are uh, these mounted ones up here. There's this one here and this one here. One's got two new growths that are reasonably advanced and the other one's in a strange state because it's grew this growth which didn't mature very well now it's pushing that strong one out and it started another one so uh, but this growth that didn't mature very well that won't bloom so it's still effectively two new growths that need to mature so one of those is to go I've made my mind up which one yet <laughs> the candida cross that stays that was a present from lynn that's coming on nicely and then we've got the big ones, the Reginellii, Spectabilis and Moraliana, they're staying. Now in here, I've got two little ones that are very similar, the Summer Breeze and the Summer Glory. Um, one of those is to go, but I don't know which one yet. <laughs> the Miltonia Sunset, um, I'm keeping, and this Miltonia, William Kirsch, <coughs> um, was a present from somebody who's died recently so we'll keep that for now needs repotting now bet when i bet when i repot it it's um got no roots bet you anything you like right coming down here the miltoniopsis that came from our 60th anniversary show that had no roots that i'm growing on i'm not keeping all of them so two of the yellow ones are going to go they're not very good plants. They still haven't got good roots, but they're starting to grow roots. So you take those with a pinch of salt. They are, I'm not saying which ones, because I don't know which ones, but they are some of those up the back. Um, as I said, a couple have got little new growth starting. Some have got some new roots starting. They're coming back to life, but they're going to need TLC for probably some time. They need to get good roots. Um, most of them are in um, a mix of the, uh, what you call it, cocoa husk, bark and um, charcoal um, and they haven't long been repotted so they won't need doing again for a while. Um, if you've got somewhere cool and not too bright, um, those will grow on. They, um, you can virtually guarantee they will do better if they've got some airflow around them. They do like air movement. Right, so that's two of those. Um, actually, I think I'll get rid of the little tiny one as well. Um, this one here was a piece that broke off when I repotted, and it's actually grown a new growth. Um, and there's actually some root activity in there, so that's like a, you could call that like a seedling to grow on. Anybody who wants to have a go at that. But again, yellow Miltoniopsis are like hen's teeth. <laughs> You've got a job to get hold of them. So we'll include that one as well. That has a little bit of a clear out in there. I've got two of the red ones. One of those can go. They're a deep red. Uh, from a distance, they almost look black in places. Very, very deep. And then the species I will keep if they live. Right, now coming down here... Um, 
We've got a couple in the house, so we'll keep those because they're part of a project. The Tahitian dancer needs a repot. Um, and I think what will happen with that is when I repot it, I'll split it. So it will become probably two. And they can go. I've had it quite a long time. And I'll keep one. So I'll mark it, but I'll keep one and let the other one go. Um, now, quite a few of these are relatively new. The Nelly Islas. That one, I don't even know if that's going to grow. There were two different colours in the pot. No, we're not showing them, are we? Uh, right, Tahitian Dancer is this one here. Um, and it should be pushing its new growth out soon. That's what I'm waiting for. That's why it hasn't been repotted yet. That will make two reasonable plants. So that's that one. Now the Nelly Isla... Um, we're in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, right. Um, the one on the... You've got two restrepias, coming in from the left, two restrepias followed by an oncidium type. That's a Nelly Isla red velvet. I'm keeping that one. Um, the next one doesn't matter. Then we've got the Renanthera. And then next to that, that little one there, is a Nelly Isla of no ID really, but it's probably just the basic form. Um, and it was in the same pot as the red velvet. There <laughs> are two different coloured plants in the same pot. So that one can go. That needs to grow some roots, but it's trying. So that's a sort of um, a, another TLC one. That um, Cambria Miltonia type, I'll be keeping that. That Encyclia, I've only recently got that. I'll keep that. Hamilton Ara. It's not in the way, I'll keep it. When it blooms, it's gorgeous. Um, the Mexicoa, that I'm keeping that, a recent one. These two Odonto Glossoms, I really have got to keep them. I've had them ages. I've spent nearly three years trying to recover these, and they are now starting to grow. Um, the repot seemed to kick them off, and I want to keep them both, basically because I'd never get them again. Um, they came from McBean's, um, and <coughs> I don't even know if McBeans are open to the public anymore. If anybody knows that they actually are and can confirm that, I wouldn't mind knowing. But that's going to be a, a UK person, obviously. And then the Naeviems, I've got two. One I've had quite a long time and it's not doing so well, but it's had a repot. It should pick up. Um, and the other one... Um, came from Jeff's, that's a project orchid, so I'll be keeping that, but one of those can go. Gorgeous blooms on that. Um, right, the uh, Chiroforum, I've only recently got that from Burnham's, I'm keeping that. Chrysomorphum was a gift, that's the one with four spikes on that we saw on Sunday. Um, that miniature Oncidium type that I don't know what it is came from Jeff's and I'm keeping it. Got two Soto Anums, one of those can go. They're not brilliant, but they are recovering quite nicely. Sweet Sugar staying, Tiny Twinkle staying, Siku Marguerite can stay. I like my Twinkles. Now these Red Fantasies are these things, all shriveled. But most of them are starting new growths. You might not be able to see the new growths. There's one at the back there, a little bit of green at the base. And that's all on that one. But it has a new growth, so it will now grow. But the bulbs are not going to plump up. That's the bad thing. This was a couple of tiny little bits left over. And... Um, you know, one of them's got a new growth there. So that could be treated like, well, it's a single bulb with a new growth. It's going to take some TLC. But somebody might want to have a go at it. That's the way I look at it. And then the other one I'll keep. I don't want to lose the whole thing. So two red fantasies can go. I don't, it's not the sort of thing I would want money for, if you know what I mean. But for somebody who bought something, perhaps they could get one of those thrown in as a freebie. And then, and then you can either try and grow it or chuck it out, but I don't want to know. <laughs> um, so two of those to go. Right, um, I've got two twinkle yellows. Do I want them both? Uh, 
No, one of those can go too. So uh, the yellow twinkles are these two. So it's that one and that one. So one of those two can go. It's a split of a larger plant. When I tried to take the older bulbs off, we ended up with two rather than one larger one. So one of those can go. Somebody else can have a go at that. My catatanti can go. It will not grow for me. It's either, it's either somebody takes it off my hands and tries to do something with it or I will dump it. I'm fed up with looking at it. The Cheyenne's a new one, the Bobcat's a new one. That Cyclopsis butterfly is not growing, but again, it doesn't take up room, I'll keep it. Um, the Rawdon Jester's not going anywhere. Now, out of the Tolumnias, they're all, they all get to stay. My Paphiopedalums, I hate to do this to Hannah because two of them are hers, but they're all going to go. I don't want them. And the thing is, if she ever d gets to a position where c she can have a go at growing these sort of orchids again, I will buy her new ones because they are the sort that come... Well, in fact, they come from Burnham's, or one of them definitely did come from Burnham's, and the other one is relatively available. So all three of the Paphiopedalums can go. They're not good plants. Um, the Mordier has a new growth. Yeah, so it's growing. Um, that growth may bloom. I don't know. And then this is the little um, Thompson. You know, I've seen worse Paphiopedalums. It is growing, it is alive, and it does have some roots. Um, the little um, Delanati eye is not looking good at all. It looks like it's going to lose those lower leaves, and that doesn't leave a lot. And I've, I've struggled with this for a very long time. It might be that it needs a certain type of media, and I'm not doing it right. So somebody can have a go at that, should they choose to do so. Right, so that's those. The Phalaenopsis. Um, well, the Violacea was a gift as a seedling, and I did say I would do my best to grow it on, and it's grown a new leaf, so we'll, we'll keep that. My two little mounted ones I'm going to keep, so, and the house plants, are part, the ones, the three in the house are part of a project, so we'll be keeping all of those. The Orangus, I've got two Mr. Sidi eyes, so one of those can go, and it will be the young plant to grow on. So, in fact, it'll be that one. It's grown a new leaf recently. It's starting another new leaf, and it's growing a root. It's, it's growing, yeah? So that one's to go. To so say, I'll keep the larger one of the two. It was two plants in the pot again, but I separated them out to mount them. So that's that. Now... <sighs> Those sarcochylus, um, they're all going to go to Lynn, um, so they're not effectively for sale. They'll, they'll be a gift. She's given me quite a few plants over time, and she just grows these so well. The fact that my three aren't growing very well at all, <laughs> even though one of them's here in bloom, it's still not growing very well. Okay, it's bloomed but it's not growing very well. And I think Lynn will do a better job with those. And that's like a return on quite a few of the plants she's given me over the past amount of time. Ugh. Right, so where are we now then? I hate to say it, but the Dimorph Orchis is going too. I've had that yonks and it won't grow. That is, I've even had a go at repotting it in the cocoa husk to see if it'll start to grow. It's just a young plant and it's so far off ever blooming that it just annoys me. Every time I have to water it and everything I think, you know, why am I keeping you? Now, although it was a gift, it's a gift from somebody who's no longer on YouTube, I'll probably never see again. And um, again, that was part of a little project between four of us, but the projects sort of died away as well. So that can go. Um, the Vanders I'll keep. That Vava Vitsella, or whatever it's called, um, that's part of a, uh, well, that's a long-term project. It was a gift from um, Zena, but with a purpose. I'm supposed to try and get that to bloom and create a seed pod for posterity. 
Um, so that's that one. The Pabsia and the Zygo are going nowhere, <laughs> both project plants anyway. So, um, yeah, those are they, and a quick look at them. When I get round to actually, um, you know, doing this proper, what I'll do now is go away and count those up and see how many I've got, and we'll go from there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you've got to look at things like that. That's not mine. That's part of the um, national collection. And the Morleana at the back there, you get rid of those two pots on that shelf, suddenly I've got a shelf there. You know, this is, it really is that, that, much, that much to go. And again, this plant up in the corner there, get rid of that one, those plants can spread out. So, and again, here, there's room for three pots where that one is. So, um, and then this center bit has just got so cluttered. Well, if you imagine the long cane dendrobium at the far end, that's the anosmum, that's going. And then we've got this thing here, that's going with its canes that go right down there and virtually touch the roof. So that's going, one of these is going, this one's going, suddenly I've got my rack back because that's filled up. Over the far side there, one of those spiky two is going, and this one's going. That's two gone. Yeah? So we're starting to thin out. And, um, yeah, uh, pleased with it. Um, so far, so good, as they say. Um, there's only one on this shelf going to go, um, but this shelf will be able to spread itself out, um, you know, when, when the other stuff moves. There's the... Um, one of my, what you call it things, my um, Valianopsis types, there's two there, they're the same, that one and the one next to it, that, that will be the one that goes down there. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's the initial flurry. As I say, this shelf down here, um, those are the two little Odontoglossums that I'm determined to rescue. Um, that's the Ignea. I don't see any point in keeping that, quite honestly. I think that's going to grow. My Restrepias and that Mastervalia at the back are good plants. They're not going anywhere. Um, the other good Restrepias up there with the blooms on in the corner. Um, and then this Mastervalia here, although it doesn't look very good, it's coming back. It's starting to push new growths out, having been repotted. So it's now, with those new growths, it will produce roots. And then hopefully one day it will look like that one, which is a good one. So, uh, yeah. Now, clearing out three, four pots on this shelf, we've got the Nelly Isla and the three Paphiopedalums does nothing for the shelf. It doesn't really give me any more room. It's just four pots I don't have to water anymore. And that's part of what the clear out's for. It's not just the space, it's the workload coming down, you know, which is, which is important to me. Um, workload on the mounts, I don't actually mind that much. I've got them off to such a fine routine, I can knock them out in a very short time. They don't take up a lot of time. And we're getting to the time of year in a month or so where um, every other day I'll be going around with a sprayer. You know, that, that, doesn't even, that doesn't even take 10 minutes. <laughs> so we're getting there. And it's things like this that are large and growing well that I want to do just that. Nice large specimen type plants with multiple spikes on. And to have room for these, see these are too close together, they could do with a little bit more room around them. And they're right up against the zygo that's tucked in there. So I want room, I want to be able to spread things out. Um, a few going missing on this shelf will allow more air around them, they won't be quite so squashed up. So. Uh, there we go then. Now I need to get hold of Marius, I shall send him an email today and say that it is now possible that we can meet somewhere and exchange plants, which means I can get these plants to him. But on the Facebook group, I think he's still in the middle of putting his brand new greenhouse up, which is where the National Collection is going to be housed. So. You know, I'll send him a prompter email to say that as soon as you've got your greenhouse up and you've got the plants in there and everything and you're ready, um, perhaps we can meet halfway or something like that and I can hand over the, uh, the extra plants so that he can get them set up where they're going to live permanently. So uh, we'll get that done. Anyway, uh, that's sort of what's going on. And um, yeah, bit of a clear out. 
Um, and the other decision I've made is that, uh, so this, this, this is going to go as well, this is part of the National Collection, that's not mine, that's another space on the floor. And I think this season, because of the slugs and bugs that came in with that cymbidium, I'm going to try it in here. So I'm going to try growing that in here this year. It'll, it'll just sit on the floor somewhere. Um, chances are, when that flipping great dendrobium's gone, it can sit there. Because then it'll get that cooler draft from the um, air intake. Um, I mean, they don't need to be warm at all, you know. So, uh, And then maybe, see the thing is with this one, this one spikes in August. So to me, it doesn't sound like it needs the cooler nights to produce its spike. It's just a seasonal spike that it does. So I don't have to worry about it being outside to get it to bloom. So that's the, that's the reason I want to keep it in. So, uh, and the eagle-eyed will spot that before the sun came out today, quite early in the day, we got outside and we put our extra two layers of shade netting up, which meant taking all of the stripy stuff off to get the green stuff up to put the stripy stuff back on and I didn't do the roof and the reason I didn't do the roof is by the time I'd done that I'd got a bit hot and sticky and the sun had come round and was starting to get a bit stronger and I thought that's it <laughs> no more work outside today we'll wait till tomorrow and do the roof and start afresh if you see what I mean so uh, yeah it was starting to get a bit a bit bright and hot in here yesterday with a a bright blue sky sunny day all day it was getting a bit silly in here everything was on the go all day again and obviously the extra layer of shade netting does it cuts down the light yes but it does cut down the heat to a degree as well so uh, anyway that's where we are I'll get this one posted later today um, those of you that went and had a look at the uh, volcano um, I tell you what I watched the sun come up there this morning as I didn't have much else to do. I'd done all my comments on my YouTube and stuff and um, it was quite spectacular. And I took a screenshot. So that's now my screensaver. That's, that's what the volcano looks like. And again, the eagle-eyed of you, the moon was out. Now when I first started watching it was dark and the moon was up there. So I actually watched the moon go down and then the hills come into view and it light up. Um, but I just have it on, um, when I'm watching it, I just put it on full screen. Because the chat that goes with it is just cobblers. It's just people being silly. They're trolls. They think their claim to fame is getting lots of people to talk together on a chat thing. Not about the volcano, just about cobblers. Total drivel. So I don't want to see that. It distracts me from what I went there for, which is to watch the volcano. <laughs> Idiot people there are. Anyway, uh, that's up to them if they... It was funny, actually. I went... I had a, had, a, had a bit to do on the computer just before bedtime, and I went and had a quick look. And I had a look at what was going on in the chat room for about two minutes. And then when I went and had a look this morning, do you know some of those people were still there chatting? Now, I don't know whether they were there all night. I don't give them monkeys, but I reckon some of them are just, that's, that's their life. That's what they do. Just go to chat rooms and put up silly comments and try and wind people up. Because there's a lot of that goes on. It's why a lot of people don't like social media. People go to these chat streams just to wind people up, to be controversial and be rude to people. And in some cases, damn right nasty. You know, and unless there's a, sharp moderator around to actually kick them off after a warning then they just get away with it you know and it is a form of bullying i don't care what anybody says it is bullying you're being nasty hiding behind a screen you wouldn't do it face to face i bet <laughs> anyway there's a way to shut it down there's a little pair of words at the bottom of the chat that says hide chat so you can click on that and not watch it or you can select full screen and that just locks it out. <laughs> you can't see it, which is what I do. Um, anyway, see you next time. So that's the plants selected, or most of them. Um, I, suspect, I suspect there's probably enough. That was a reasonable, thorough look through. And um, then we'll get it organised. But that won't be immediately. Don't expect this stuff to appear in Mixed Mad Mazda Valleys tomorrow. It could be weeks before it happens. But it's underway. That's the important thing. I'll see you next time.